All right, but one thing you actually should all care about is what's going on with BP's out of control oil spill. Yeah, I actually went to the Gulf of Mexico to see how the region is now coping with this unprecedented disaster. 65 days ago, the Deepwater Horizon oil rig exploded and sank into the Gulf of Mexico. Since then, millions of gallons of oil have gushed into the ocean, creating an economic apocalypse for the residents of the Gulf Coast and leaving the fragile ecosystem in peril. And while Twitter is usually the place where topics like Justin Bieber or Apple's iPhone trend, Attack of the Show's viewers were venting their frustrations over this catastrophe. The BP oil spill could go on for years and years. Is this true? The spill is giving me the same feeling I had before Katrina made landfall. Why isn't BP cleaning this up yet? What's going on? I knew the only way to find answers would be to see the devastation for myself. It's a pile of oil out there. It's wrecking everything we know. This is our last weekend of fishing. We, we know it's going to happen. They keep moving the line out further and further, and it's bad. This is a long-term deal. My kids, my kids' kids may be affected by this. All my friends, and they're, it's sad. All right, it's about uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, and we are driving through a very lovely downpour to try to get to Bell Chase to meet up with Billy Nungesser, who's the uh, Blackman's Parish president. And what concerns you the most at this point? Is it containment? Is it cleanup? Is it the guys out of work? It's everything. This is not the way people act. This company has shown no responsibility. You've got a president of an oil company making comments like, I want to get back to my way of life. There's no heavy oil under the surface. Right. But to make irresponsible statements, and this is the guy we're dependent on to step up in the plane. Thank God the President of the United States demanded they pay for this. Billy, finally, we have a lot of young male viewers out there that, are, that have said that they're willing to put the Xbox controller down and log off of Facebook. They're fired up and they're upset. Is there anything they can do about it? They can put the pressure on BP to step up to the plate. You have said, look, once the oil is there, the damage is done, it might be too well, late. Well, it's in certain areas. We've got a lot of marsh left that it invested. If we can get working on this berm, continue this, it gives us a fighting chance. At least we did everything possible. And anything short of that is unacceptable. The whole thing with this BP thing is bull All you keep hearing is we're trying to capture, we're trying to contain, we're trying to suck up this oil. You know why? Because they're making money off of it. They're making money off of destroying everything we have. There's nothing being done. I mean, you do see things happening. You do see the cleanup crews going, but all these little methods that are being done, why haven't they been done the first time? I sat down with BP spokesperson Jason French at a town hall meeting to find out what BP's really doing to resolve this crisis. So Jason, first of all, um, I do not envy your position at all. You must understand you're working for a corporation right now that, that people are, are upset with, to say the least. Absolutely. The anger here in Grand Isle is understandable. I honestly expected more anger here. Because they're, they're asking questions, and, and you're giving answers, and you're, and you're being candid and honest with your answers, but why should they trust BP? Only action's going to prove it, and action's going to take time. I mean, have you gone out on the spill? Have you seen Yes, I've been out to the rig site um, and have been out near shore as well. Mm -hmm. And what, what have you seen out there? The word catastrophe is, I can't think of a bigger word than catastrophe. BP's track record in the last five years, they spent over $350 million in OSHA fines for safety things. You look at the, the, the Three Little Piggies memo. So that was the name of the, the official BP memo where they did a cost benefit analysis as to what sort of shelters the workers should be living in on the drill platforms. And they found that, that their recommendation was that they should build the, the cheaper shelters because the odds of the big wolf blowing the house down or an explosion was a million to one. Again, it, it's only words now until you see it, but the commitment to stay here and, and to do it in a way that, as I said, protects the safety, security of the community and the long-term interests of the community is something we are committed to doing. Do you believe BP should be in charge of this operation if a crime could have been committed? I, I understand the concern. I would say that at this point, we are taking direction from the federal government in regards to the response. Are there things that we could be doing better? Um, absolutely.
But since we're taking federal direction on the response and the federal government has insisted that the oil industry is best equipped for the response at the seabed floor, I'm not sure that there's anything that that would do. We might be down right now, but we'll be back. And we have to. We have nothing else to fall back on. It's all fishing. Tomorrow, I'm going to take a look at the impact the oil is having on our wildlife. Behind me, there should be hundreds of, of healthy pelicans. And the potential consequences of using chemical solvents in our ocean. If Corexit is eating through rubber on boats, it could cause blood in the urine like it did in certain tests.